Hello and welcome to another Scardcast Battle Report. Today, the Tau and the Drukhari face off against each other in this cool imperial world. The Dark Eldar looking for spoils of war, the Tau looking for information. Let's begin. Hello and welcome to another Battle Report in the studio. I'm here with Patrick. Say hi, Patrick. Hello. And uh, he's brought his Tau. I brought my Drukhari. Today we're going to play on this cool looking battlefield that I set up. And uh, we're going to go over the armies, take a look at the mission, and then get to deployment. And here we have 2,000 points of Drukhari. Now, I decided to go for something quite a little different. No homunculus stuff, really, other than like a Kronos. And the Scourge technically get modified by the homunculus. But... Uh, no homunculi, no racks, no grotesque, nothing like that. I wanted to try a variety of different things that we haven't seen very often. So sit tight. Let's go over this list. We have Archon Scari himself. Today he has brought the Art of Pain. And two allies, Drazar, the Master Blades, and Lilith, Hesperax. I also brought a beast pack with his beasts. In the battle line, I've got three units of ten Cavalry Warriors, one unit of ten Witches. And then to round out the list, a bunch of stuff. We have a raider and three venoms to split up units and give me options. We have six Reaver jet bikes with double heat lance, one unit of mandrakes, one, un one Kronos, two ravagers and two units of scourge as the fire base, a core of the archon, and rounding all out, one unit of incubi to go with Drazar. And there you have it, folks, 2,000 points for today's battle report. All right, this is what I brought today. We've got... Um... Led by Shadow Sun right in the middle there. Followed by two Cry uh, Cold Star Commanders, each one with a squad of uh, Crisis Suits. Um, this one's all plasma rifles, all cyclic with air burst on the other side. Um, next up, we got Dark Strider and his Pathfinders. Uh, Cadre Fireblade on the left there. And um, the Fire Warriors to go with him, along with their trusty Devilfish. And then in the back, we got all the heavy support. Got two Riptides with Plasma, Missiles, and um, Ion Guns. Followed by a Ghost Keel. Look at how cool these look. Them. They look so cool. They're really nicely painted. Thank you. And then to finish it off, two broadsides with all the missiles. There you have it, sneaky little stealth suit unit as well. That's 2,000 points of Tau. <laughs> Today's battle report has taken hold nice and easy. Hold one, hold two, hold three objectives. Crucible of battle. So this is what it's going to look like. It's what we call um, fake hammer and anvil. And then delayed reserves. Interesting. Until the start of the third battle round, each time a reserve or strategic reserve wishes to arrive, you have to roll on three plus it arrives. On If you don't roll it, then they fail to arrive this turn. That could be very interesting as both armies love using reserves. Here we are after deployment. The Tau and the Drukhari ready to fight. Now you uh, lost the roll to pick sides. I let you defend and then you pick that side because you want a nice big open field to just murder me. Uh, the objectives are down. There's one here in the open, one there in the open, one there, and, and then one in each of our deployment zones as well. So how did you deploy? You've got your Pathfinders. They can scout and they have infiltrate, but you decided to potentially scout them. I countered with my mandrakes to threaten them, to push them back, or encourage you to come forward. Then we have Riptide, Devilfish with Fire Warriors, another Riptide, Broadsides, Plasma Unit of Crisis Suits, um, Shadow Sun, Ghost Keel, Stealth Suits, well, and you did put some in reserve though. You put, uh, you put your big unit of Crisis Suits. Yes. Yeah, you're going to risk it. Yes, risk I it am. for the biscuit. Okay. Me too. I also put reserves. <laughs> So I've got five Cavalites with guns in that Venom. My Beast Pack, ready to kind of move up this side here. This Venom here with Drazar. The two units of Scourge, ready to kind of jump in and out. Uh, then we've got the Kronos, the Venom with more guys. My Court, with the Art of Pain on the Archon, just moving up into the open, ready to get murdered. And then two Ravagers, trying to stay still, because they're very useful this game. The same as my Scourge. 
They're probably the most useful thing I have against a bazillion vehicles and a little bit of infantry. So with that, it is going to be roll for turn number one. Okay, take and hold, pretty simple. Hold objectives, kill stuff. You're playing tactical, I'm playing tactical. You ready, Patrick? I am. Okay, turn one goes to the Tau. Bring it on, baby, let's go. Once again, scoring card by miniwargamingforge.com. A lot of you have asked me if you can buy the branded ones from... I'm going to ask Matthew to see if uh, we can have them in the store or whatever. But uh, yeah, I'd let Matthew know when you order that you saw mine and you want one. There you go. Um, so here we have it. So primary, secondary, primary, secondary, turn, command points. Like that. It's easy for you to follow along. Turn number one cards. All right, we got extend battle lines and investigate signals. Uh, I'm going to keep both of those because I think I can get some points out of that this turn. So with that, what's your game plan for turn one? All right, so I'm going to get these pathfinders over there and get some uh, investigate signals, probably get somebody back here for the same thing. And uh, I'm already on an objective in no man's land. So you don't really need to do much on that exactly. front. Other than that, just positioning for your... Turn two, and then your reserves can potentially come in. Oh, I love it. That's okay, do. let's do this. <laughs> Showing off the town movement, we had them advance up to get investigate signals. Uh, the the devilfish and this riptide moved up in the middle, ready to shoot the court of the archon. This riptide moved back to get another investigate signals. The broadside stayed still. Shadow Sun kind of stayed around the same because she can see the beast pack. They moved up. They can see the beast pack. Now, for anybody who's watching Tau for the first time, drones are just counters. They don't really do anything they just show you what the upgrades are so we're using them cool thematically because they look awesome and then the ghost kill moved up as well the stealth suits holding this objective but getting into position to just try and blast my beast pack sadly yeah <laughs> anyway with that let's go into the shooting phase we'll come back at the end of the turn but and see how much damage the tau have done end of your turn so the beast monster died a horrible death um, to a bunch of shooting. Now, of course, we're using these as like line of sight blocking. So there's like little pockets of like buildings so you can like actually hide behind. So it is, there's a lot more firing lanes than you might think in this battlefield. Um, then over here we had the big riptide kill three of these um, uh, Catalyte Warriors. And then of course you got your points. So let's take a look at your point scoring, but not a bad turn killing a Scourge with some out of line of sight shooting. The entire beast pack just getting absolutely nuked and a couple of units from or models from the court of the Archon, but it's now time for me to retaliate. So you get two points for investigate signals and five points for extend battle lines, bringing your total up to nine victory points as we move on to battle round number one for me. I get a command point, you get a command point. Well, apparently we're both looking for signals, so I got investigate signals as well and area denial. So it should be okay to get that too, which I'm very excited about. So it seems like the battle is joined. Well, okay, so you're gonna be putting a lot of pressure on me. I need to bubble out in order to get some work done uh, in order to, I, so I'm gonna try and get my investigate signals. My plan is mainly gonna be thrust up this way and try to deal with these three things as quickly as possible. And then just kind of be annoying on this side. I should be able to get six points for investigate signals this turn, which I'm really excited about. And my home objective being stickied. I just need to make sure that I zone out your deep strikers, but we don't even know if they're gonna show up. It's on a three plus, so it could just not come in until turn, end of turn, until turn three. So that's very, very interesting. Okay, so with that, let's dive into my movement phase. Turn number one for the Drukhari. So I had to move out. Because the Tau went first, I have to get aggressive. If I get too defensive, they'll take over the whole table, get all the angles on me. So this time, this is the turn where I go forward, I try and kill key targets, and I saturate the board with targets to give the Tau lots of things to shoot at next turn, so that no matter what they shoot at, they're gonna kill stuff, but I have more stuff in their place. So it's more about board positioning than anything when it comes to my movement phase to make sure that I have all the units in position to be relevant next turn, but it forces the Tau to have to deal with everything in my army rather than like being able to pick one or two things that went out into the open. So that's the plan. As for investigate signals, they moved back to get that corner. The Mandrakes did just move up to get this corner. You did Overwatch to try and stop me from getting points and killed three. So almost, almost got the whole unit. I got, I'm glad the whole unit didn't die because that would be very sad. This Venom moved up wholly within nine. 
but the Cabalite Warriors hopped out and moved out first so they could see the, the Ghost Kill and them here, which means they'll be able to shoot and then just jump back into the Venom. So if the Venom does investigate signals, then I get my points with that as well. This Venom dislodged Drazar and his Incubi, who moved up and then moved around. Mm -hmm. is gonna probably charge in, hopefully kill that, and then hop back into the Venom as well, just to keep him alive for another turn. And then I sacrifice his Venom into the middle of the table to get area denial, just moved up, and it also gets me my guns in range of a variety of things, like Pathfinders or the, the, the Riptides, things like that. The Scourge moved up, this one moved from here over here. They're gonna shoot and just move back this way. These Crisis Suits are more than likely just gonna jump over here, although they do have to go up and up. So around here, which means they'll be able to see over this next turn, which is going to be really annoying depending on what the Tau want to do. So my Scourge are going to be not long for this world, so I need to make sure that they get, I get the most out of their, their attacks. And this unit moved up here to get within 12 of the Ghost Keel because they're annoying and I want to kill it. And then this one stayed back uh, in order to move back at 6 after shooting. And then with the Cab Lights and the Venom, just zone out the back of the board here so that the crisis suits have to land in front of me. They don't land behind my lines and cause a bunch of issues. The core of the Archon moved up. Couldn't get in range of this objective. However, I have 2 CP for a strike and fade. So I can't potentially shoot and then just move on to the objective at the end here to you know, force the town to deal with them as well again. So with that, on to the shooting phase. Let's see what happens. End of the shooting phase. So um, quite, I would say... An effective shooting phase, Patrick. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. So I was able to kill the Devilfish and a Riptide. But the way the Riptide died was kind of anticlimactic, really. The I have four Dark Lances, all hit, all wound. You failed three out of four, four ups, and yep. you just like you just died. You just like so such a quick death. Poor Riptide. Poor Riptide. They're really cheap though. They're 180 points for like a really chunky unit. That's it's only 65 more points than a Ravager, yeah. and probably like Usually more, way more survivable than a Raptor. More survivable, but I don't think the guns are as good. Fair, oh, the Dark Lances <laughs> are very good. Yes, fair enough. Uh, I did kill almost the entire unit of Pathfinders and left one uh, left there with some shooting from like a variety of different sources, especially the Court. The Court then striked and faded up to get onto this objective and push your reserves back a little bit into that zone there. Uh, this Venom is getting me my area denial. Of course, the Scourge have shot and moved back. I did kill one Crisis Suit, put one damage on that Ghost Kill, and forced you to use one of your Ignore right. Damage drones. And then, yeah, that's it. I did Investigate Signals with three different units. And as we move into the Charge phase, I have three Paint Tokens left. I'm mm -hmm. going to be putting one Paint Token on Drazar to reroll really that charge <laughs> to just make sure that I... You know, try very hard not to fail that charge. If that charge fails, I will probably even charge yeah. with them. But they they want to get into this venom, so that would be like a last resort over here. Um, eviscerated stealth suits coming up. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> That's just a pain token. I want a pain token. <laughs> well, Drazar did walk in and just killed three three stealth suits by himself. Expected. That was about it. Okay, let's see what I scored. So I was able to score Aerodin Alpha five, but I got investigate signals for six points. That's right, because Archon Skari wants to show off, apparently. And uh, he needed to do just one better. <laughs> so with that, I will be getting um, uh, 11 points on uh, secondaries. You have your nine. You have one command point. I have zero. These have been scored. And we will go into battle round number two. So at the start of your turn, you do owe me one Battleshock test, and then you do have that objective and your home objective, so you get 10 points on primary, you go up one command point, let's see where your secondaries are. But roll the Battleshock test over here, we'll just roll it now to get it out of the way. Good they job. are okay, no extra pain tokens for me, yet. So your cards, what did you get? Oh, I got Attempting Target and Deploy Teleport Homers. I'm considering dumping one of them for a CP. Ooh, later, interesting. So you have two CP, I have one. We're about round number two. Yep. We'll come back, see if you think about it. I'm going to make this the tempting target. Yeah, just uh, yep. just in case you were thinking about dumping one. So you're not going to change any of your... You just measured out. They can run and get into the middle, so yep. you don't have to give up crisis unit shooting. Yep. That's the whole idea. Is I don't want to give up a crisis suit to do an action. Exactly. And in your list, you don't have any like Vespids or Crute units that can kind of do little crappy well, actions or whatever. Well, most of my chaff has been killed. So. I, I, one of the things when I play against Tau is kill the little stuff yeah, that helps you score the game. And then it forces things like Broadsides or Crisis Suits or Shadow Sun to go and have to do the actions exactly. and things like that. 
which then makes it harder for you to kind of keep your firepower up, but also do the damage. However, Definitely. we have, like, you get to move, and then just before you bring in your reserves, we get to see if they come in. So you, so we don't know if the reserves are coming in. Well, this could get really wild. So let's see. But after my turn one, I'm feeling, uh, like, more comfortable about losing some of my, like, uh, the beast pack, which is very useful into the Tau. However, your hit back is going to be pretty good, in my opinion. With that, let's go into the movement phase. Good one, Which dude. dice is the good one? That one. Um, uh, <laughs> so we, you did your movement. So what, what's your thought process here? What, how did you move? Uh, I'm going to try to take out this flank and take control of this kind of side of the board is my plan. I think there's some squishier things over here I can shoot off. Yep. Um, <clears throat> Dark Strider has a 12-inch denial bubble yep. for reserves. And then your Riptide and Broadsides weren't able to fully block off this corner, but I can, I can only deep strike like a, my... Raider filled with witches in yeah. there if I wanted to. Um, other than that, you've got a couple of different things to shoot. You've got everything ready. And now we wanted to show you all on camera. Big the moment. big roll. You want to try bring in your reserves, yes. but there are delayed reserves. There's fights going on elsewhere that dictate that your crisis suit might not show up. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. Picked out my special dice. Oh, oh it's the my, special dice. My Let's see. All set up for all the luck I can get. Oh, oh they oh. show up. Look at that. Okay, so we'll see where they come in. Well, your reserves decided to show up, but uh, so that's the end of your movement phase. Correct. And they're all over here, ready to just blow up some stuff. So I am going to spend one command point to rapid ingress to allow a reserve unit to come in, but because of delayed reserves, after spending the command point, I now have to see if the unit is allowed to show up. <laughs> At least that's how we read it. If you disagree with me, leave a comment, tell me how I'm wrong and how you're gonna download the video. But that's okay. Because <laughs> so does Lilith Hesperax have a plan? Has she been chasing this Cold Star Commander the whole time? And will she arrive at the same time? She does not. She stays in reserve. She's like, nope, and I have wasted my command point. More. End of the shooting phase, fire, strike and fade, of course, fire and fade with the Christ suits. They, oh my goodness, shoot so much. I got very lucky though, and passed a stupid amount of saves on my Cabalites that soaked up so many cyclic iron blaster shots behind this barricade. And uh, my Medusa lived with one wound, <laughs> which is great, because that means I'll be able to hold an objective, which is awesome. However, they're just gonna, they're just putting so much pressure on me right now. So you're gonna get three points for deploy teleport homers. You did kill this Venom. You did kill that Venom, but that Venom passed like four, six up invulnerable saves, which means you had to shoot it with pretty much everything and weren't able to shoot at the Incubi. This, the, uh, the Ghost Keel did shoot at the, the Scourge and did kill three of them though, to lower my number of Dark Lances that can come at you next turn. However, this is a big deal as well. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, well, wow. interesting, very interesting. You're really pushing heavy. <laughs> Look at this. It just <laughs> looks like so overbearing coming right at my deployment zone. <laughs> I think he's gonna get behind enemy lines next turn. He's just gonna run into my zone. Okay, but I feel like it didn't go as bad as it could have for me. It didn't go as good as it could have for you. So we still have quite an interesting game. I have a couple of reserves coming in, but we don't know if they will be arriving. So let's see what you scored. Oh, he's gonna charge. Sorry, I, I got the supercharge. Okay, where are you yeah. charging? I'm gonna charge the Incubi. Oh, there you go. The super tower charge, trying to keep me pinned down. I figured I'd rather charge you than have you charge me. So. That does make sense. Okay, so they make it in. Let's see what Dras are an Incubi can do into crisis suits. Excellent. End of the charge phase. Uh, you did charge my Mandrake and murdered my Mandrake which makes sense because you can't have my Mandrake bouncing around and doing stuff. However, on this flank, things went not anything according to plan. <laughs> you failed your Battleshock test from the Incubi. The Incubi killed one Crisis Suit, and then Drazar viciously executed your commander <laughs> and put three damage on this Crisis Suit, so he has three wounds remaining. Uh, it's really cool. The drones are neat because you can just take them off when you take wounds and then, you know, mark the drone. It's cool. I like it. They look awesome. So now there's no drones there. There's one guy with three wounds. However, still locked in combat though. But it is a vehicle, so hopefully I can shoot it potentially and then charge Drazar and his Incubi somewhere else, which I think would be very good. You are Battleshocked, so no OC there, which gives me control over that objective. I still have three for him. Yeah, I'll have one, yeah. two, three, four there. Um, which means I probably don't have to use the... 
uh, one CP to auto pass morale over yeah. here, which is good for me. Uh, so that means I could get a 15 this turn. However, I don't know if my reserves are coming in, and I really need reserves because this has the capacity of blowing my entire army to smithereens and is right in the middle of the table. So it can go anywhere and shoot anything, which is very dangerous. <laughs> so let's see what happens. I have to trust in the power of the Dark Lance. On to turn number two, but let's see what you scored. Okay, so at the end, you will, you did use your two CP. I used my one to try rapid ingress. You get three points for deploy teleport hummers. You were unable to get extend battle lines, attempting target, sorry. Did you want to keep it or I'm discard it? Take the CP. Okay, discard it for a CP, and this goes up to 12 points as we move on to the next turn. I hope you all enjoy these little, like, this little part of the game. I know I'm just showing you, like, a like a counter. You can see where everything is. So with that, round number three, you go up to two CP. I go up to one CP. Let's see what my cards say. Ten points for primary as well, which I forgot to add at the beginning of the turn there. So I got Defense Stronghold and Storm Hostile Objective. The one in the middle or the one near your broadsides. Uh, you have 15 objective control on the middle objective. Uh, okay, good luck to me. And then Defense Stronghold is also in a precarious position because you can fire and fade. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that. However, uh, let's do some battle shock tests. I just need one battle shock on my Archon. I believe he's a five or six is what he, the rest of the squad is. So I will get a 15 for primary, which does help me a little bit because my secondaries are going to be a little tougher to score this turn. But it's nice to get up on the scoreboard. And with that, let's go on to the battle. Okay, so what's my thought process here? I need to, I can't really kill this. I'm going to have to like, tie it up in combat. I want to try and kill this to free up Drazar, because if Drazar can go in and potentially kill Ghost Keel or your commander, that would be the best thing as well. Um, now this over here, I'm probably going to send them this way and just murder this little unit just to kind of keep them up and running, or go up here and start killing this unit over here. So we've got a couple of different options. You do have a very powerful Overwatch handy right now, so we'll... Uh... <laughs> We'll see. We'll see what you decide to overwatch. So my order of operations and moving is going to be very important. And then reserves. We'll see if reserves show up. If they do, great. If not, well, I'm SOL. Other than that, let's uh, do this movement phase. You haven't overwatched yet. Not yet. I did try and bait you out with so many things. I was like, move. Do you want to overwatch? No. Okay, move. Do you want to overwatch this? Do you want to overwatch this? And you didn't take the bait. And then the thing that you wanted to overwatch just moved into a place where you couldn't really overwatch them. Yeah, because I got one for later. That's right. That's right. You've got your CP later. Oh, you could overwatch any of my reserves if they decide to show up. So we're going to try and bring in Lilith Hesperax and a deep striking raider. It does. Yep. And then we're going to try to bring in the Reaver Jet Bikes. They do not. They want to you know, stay, just want to stay off the board. Yeah. Nobody can stop them. Okay. Quick note. Controversial rule time. Okay. Can you or can you not disembark after a reserve transport has come in? So some places rule yes, some places rule no. Today we're going to rule yes. And I normally rule yes. And most people use it with a land reader. Bring in a land raider, get your like berserkers or chosen or whatever out, and then charge from there with a shorter charge. Now the re the the rule interaction comes within finishing a move. So when you disembark, it says you have to finish a move with a transport, then you disembark, or you can do it before the transport moves, and then you can't move again. So when you come in from reserve, it says the transport counts as having made, or any unit counts as having made a normal move. So that's where the issue lies, is does it count as finishing a normal move, or does it just count as a normal move? So some TOs rule it one way, some TOs rule it the other way. I just wanted to show it off, but let's start a discussion. A civilized discussion in the comments, please and thank you, um, because I tend to rule it yes in every in every sense, with land raiders, whatever it is, um, but you let me know in the comments down below. Deep Striking Lilith, getting out, let's go. Okay, so end of the movement phase, you can see like the battlefield over here. Um, the aim is going to be soften up this big unit, try and disrupt the flank push that you've been doing, and potentially just deal or tie up those broadsides slash, you know, do some work on that riptide. I, I don't really have a lot to deal with this unit, which is annoying because they could score a lot of points. However, I do have some Dark Lances pointed that way. Oh, shoot, before that happens, I have one more reserve to come in. Ha! Does it come in? It does. 
Well, that solves this issue. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they can't be within 12, though. But uh, that is my little, little unit cabalites I always like keeping in my back pocket. Shooting phase did not go badly for me, I would say, Patrick. Oh, pretty good. Yeah. Um, the best part of the shooting phase for me was this Medusa getting six hits into the unit of, Cab of uh, Fire Warriors. There was only five left with, the <laughs> with him and literally killing all of the squad yeah. and then battle shocking them on top of that. Battle Thanks to the pain right. token for reroll wounds <laughs> with the Archon. I did kill one suit and put one down to two wounds. So I'm starting to work on that unit there. And then I did have to shoot this entire Venom into that one crisis suit even with minus one, but I did kill it, which allows Drazar to go on a blinding rampage. Uh, other Dark Lances shooting, did shoot into the Riptide, put it down to seven wounds. The highlight though, was four Dark Lances hitting and wounding, and then you making four out of four invulnerable saves here, keeping quite a, bunch, quite a few of those Christ suits alive. However, you did spend the command point to make them more survivable. Although Which, you didn't make a single six up. Nope. But you did spend it, and then you just made a bunch of invuls anyway. Yes. <laughs> so with that, I did spend a command point on grenade to just do some wounds, which helped start off the wounds there. And now we go into the charge phase. I'm back up to five pain tokens. I started the turn with six, and now I'm back up to five. I love it. I love this pain token mechanic. It's so good. It's End of the turn. So, attacks back. You killed a Cavalite Warrior with the Crisis Suits. You didn't do anything with the Riptide. You put two wounds on my Venom, and you did kill three Witches with Broadsides. The Witches did uh, take, do six damage to one Broadside. I didn't give them a Pain Token. I was able to kill the Fireblade with Archon Skari. Then the Cavalites did put two wounds on a suit. Three wounds, actually. You felt three out of three, three ups, sadly. So one more Crisis Suit did die. But I don't have enough objective control to take that objective away from you. <laughs> However, I do have enough objective control to take this objective away from you. The ra Both the raider and the witches rolled really high for their charges. Okay, I rolled a 10 both ways. So even if there's like an argument to be said that you can't disembark within nine inches, which I'm sure if some of you will cook some stuff up, I would have made that charge anyway. So the issue becomes, can you disembark or not after you bring in a transport? I'm of the vein that you can, However, I'm sure most of you will have very strong opinions about this because it's not something you've seen very often or at all. But then again, back in 9th edition, you couldn't deep strike a unit and then move after you deep strike. But that is definitely a thing in 10th edition, right? Like Scourge can drop down, they can shoot, then they can move. You can drop down, shoot, and then fire and fade with the unit. There's lots of things that weren't allowed before that are now allowed. So is it supposed to be the case? Yes or no? Leave a comment in the description. Um, other than that, they were able to shoot them away, which was crazy. I don't know if I said that before. And then Drazar did charge into Shadow Sun and just nuked Shadow Sun. That was like, didn't even let the Incubi attack. No. Nope, he was just like, at mine. And then they piled in to take yeah, that objective oh, yeah, away from you. So all in all, let's see what I scored. I can't believe it's all, that was turn two, right? Yep. Okay, so that was only turn two. Um, I got 15 primary, I had 11. I will start to defend my stronghold. And I did successfully storm hostile objective, bringing me up to 16 secondary points here. You did spend both of your command points. I spent my command point. And I'm not going to get rid of defense stronghold. I'm going to hold on to it, which won't give me an additional command point either. So with that, we go on to a battle round number three. We each get a command point again. Let's dive in to see what happens. See if the Tau can kill Archon Skari. Murder time. Also, your Kalyon activates. Now, they have the enhancements of the Kalyon activates, like, right on turn two when they drop in, which is why they have so many attacks. Um, <laughs> so, I, you own, you don't think you owe me any Battle Shock tests. Um, so, with that, we'll just go into... Is he under? No, he's not no, under no, 50. He's at 50. Okay. So, let's go on to the turn, see what you cards you get, and we'll go from there. All right. I got behind enemy lions, as Gary predicted. I, I did. I you. totally called that. <laughs> I'm in a good position to do so. Uh, assassination, we got Archon Skari, Drazar, and Lilith out there. Yep. I might be able to get one of them. Yep, yeah, especially our, I think Skari is the most vulnerable one yeah. right now. Um, and with that, that's it. So I think you can do those. I'm currently defending my stronghold. So there you have it. Let's see what you do in your movement phase. Now, of course, you're running out of tools, but that's oh, that yeah. basically my strategy when I play against any army that has lots of shooting. Is I put a lot of pressure on that second turn. Your shooting wasn't as like didn't do as much as you would have hoped which then put me in a great position for me to capitalize on this turn that i just had 
And now I was able to kill all the little things. You can see I tried to take out the devilfish first. Then I took out, tried to take out the pathfinders and the little, little units that help you score the game. Um, the Drazar charge thing, that was fortunate for me. Like just yes. being able to kill a crisis suit and that within the span of a turn. Um, and then, of course, that whole thing is more to show you that it is a thing, and I want you to discuss that down below. But in this case, it worked very, very well. Okay, what's your plan? Ooh. You want to murder things? Yep, I'm going to try to get rid of your resources as you did mine. <laughs> I know, lots of MSU stuff, because I've got two little scourge yeah. over there. I still have, like, units back here, and I still have six Reaper Jet Bikes in Strategic yeah. Reserve. Because <laughs> it's Battle Round 3, they no longer have to roll to come in this turn, which is very exciting. Yeah. Moving phase, you've decided to pretty much hunker down and shoot things, because you can still shoot while you're in combat, being vehicles everywhere. You did fall back, because you can fall back and shoot with the Riptide. You decided not to fall back with the Ghost Kill over here. I do have one command point. I'm going to go ahead and spend it. I'm going to rapid ingress my bikes sure. now. And they're essentially going to come in right here. Ready to come in and do some damage on that Riptide next turn. And just stay outside of his line of sight. So here we go. The bikes have shown up. And they're ready. They're hidden. Mm -hmm. They're ready to participate next turn. Yeah, now that it's fast. battle round three, the delayed reserves are no longer. And they're very fast. They also can advance and charge. So I could potentially advance them all the way up and get them into the yeah. middle of the board. They're very, very quick. So good. I'm trying them out. I think if you use bikes, you need to rapid ingress them. So we'll see what happens. End of the shooting phase. So the broadsides uh, killed a witch with Saris of Systems and then missed all four shots into this Rapture, sadly. The Riptide did fall back and shot everything into Drazar's unit and killed three, uh, two of the <laughs> unit because I rolled very good five up impulse. And then over here, four suits nuked Argon Skari. I did fail my first Shadowfield save, giving you assassination. But then the commander, I passed like six out of seven five up saves against the Sibs for the Cavalites, only killing one. So they lived. So that means you can't like move around or charge somewhere else or whatever. That was a big deal, but that was very hot roll in for the Cavalites. Yeah. And then the Ghost Keel did blow up my Venom on this side, so he's freed up. Uh, he's definitely been the, the, oh, but he did take three damage for his Hazardous, though, because he didn't overcharge hurt his gun. Himself. He did, he did hurt himself. So with that, potential charges, if uh, the Tau want, we'll come back at the end of the turn. And that's the end of the turn. One Cowalite survived! <laughs> Again! Uh, the Witches did kill one uh, suit and bring the other one down to six wounds remaining. I did pop Lilith once per game a bazillion attacks. And other than that, uh, the Ghost Kill did charge in and uh, tie up those Cowalite Warriors. But with that, let's go over to your scoring. So end of battle of your turn three, you weren't able to get behind the lines. You did get assassination. And you also got five points up here. So you're up to 15 for primary as we move into the bottom of turn number three. Uh, you didn't spend your command point this turn. You get five, go up to 17. Are you getting rid of or keeping behind enemy lines? Keep I'm going to keep it for now. I will defend my stronghold successfully. Bring me up to 19 secondary points as we move into my turn, number three, and I also get a command point. Okay, so battle shock tests. I owe you a battle shock test on this Ravager. Uh, so he passes this time. He failed last time. And then Drazar and his friends are battle shocked, and they are okay. So they're not worried. And then I do have a battle shock test on those cab lights back there. They're not battle shocked because there are six, and these are not battle shocked either. Okay, so everybody's keeping oh him i don't know he's surrounded by suits oh no he doesn't care <laughs> yeah, he's he's, he's very brave he knows that archon scari was standing right there so uh you know if he runs away archon scari will know if i live maybe i'll be the next turn That's, he might actually just go and stab archon scari and, like make sure he doesn't come back you know just to make sure that he's really really dead <laughs> so i'll get another so i go up to 30 primary here it's just the points at this point are really starting to skyrocket for the Dark Eldar. Teleport homers and cleanse, two of the ones that I can definitely do as well. So now this objective is stickied as well as this one, because I do hold it with Cavalite Warriors. Um, I will be able, I should be able to get cleanse and deploy teleport homers um, pretty easily. Like the, I probably do deploy teleport homers with my witches because they have pistols. They can do, they can shoot while they're in combat. Uh, that is another controversial thing as well. You can read into it too. So, <laughs> so 
there's a lot of stuff like people will argue that's not the case. Yes, if you have pistols, you should be able to. Same as a monster that can shoot out of combat can also do actions when, or vehicle can do actions when they're in combat. Uh, so we'll see what we do with this. You still have your Overwatch, which is really deadly. So I probably want to like keep uh, uh, th give this unit wide berth. But it's time to really solidify the point lead and see what we can do at the end, uh, towards the bottom of three here. End of the movement phase. So uh, you decided to try and Overwatch my my Reaver Jet bike, so they moved up. You weren't able to hit any of them, but then the Ravagers were able to like push up instead. Now I've got angles of the Ravagers. I can charge, potentially do tank shock, things like that as well. I'm gonna keep them in combat here just because it doesn't matter. And I've got the ability to, they fell back because you can grenade strat even if you haven't full, if even if you fell back. Drazar's just gonna come up. He can't execution you anymore, but he just wants to get stuck in and start flipping, flipping crisis suits over, which I think would be very entertaining for Drazar. Uh, the Scourge will once again have a nice angle down the middle here and they are gonna likely cleanse. I'll just get one cleanse, but I want all my guns. Eventually. So they're going to do teleport homers, they're going to cleanse, and we'll get into the shooting phase. Okay, end of the shooting phase. You made some invul saves this time. Yes. And uh, so the Riptide is alive with one wound remaining. I killed one of the crisis suits with some sporadic shooting, and I put five wounds with the grenade on that ghost kill. Wow, that was a, that was a spicy grenade, that's for sure. So I have zero pain tokens, though. <clears throat> no reroll charges, no reroll hit rolls, nothing. Unless you fail a battle shock with, um, <laughs> with Drazar coming in. Well, the, if he makes that charge. I have zero CP. So he could fail that charge. So with that, let's dive into some charges. Let's see what I need to make. Do I need, a, I need to roll a four? Okay, well, let's roll that one on camera for everybody to watch. Okay, Drazar is going to make it in. He wants to fight you. So. He wants to fight you good. Start of the fight phase, I made him take a battle shock test. Boom, failed the battle shock test. Pain token goes right on to Drazar. Excellent, good job. Do I get the pain token back because I'm awesome? No, no, poor little uh, Kronos didn't give me any back. This turn, sadly, big tier. Uh, everything else made the charge. Uh, fights first, I get to fight. So I'm just gonna go with Drazar first and we'll go with Lilith, we'll go around and do all that stuff. I can't believe the Cavalite's still alive. He just, he still survived uh, as commander fighting. The two suits uh, ended up killing the last Incubi. So Drazar is no longer leading a unit. That broadside has one wound left, and I was able to kill, barely kill the Riptide over here as well with my little agonizer. So all in all, a decent turn for me. Let's see my score. So start of the turn, got 15. I did get, uh, I'm gonna get five for deploy teleport homers. So I'd go up to 24, and I'll get three for cleanse. So I'll go up to 27 secondary points. As we move into battle round number four, you still have one CP, so you'll go up to two. I will have one CP now as well so uh, i do have enough here to contest this objective anyway so you don't get that for primary you do owe me one battle shot well two battle shocks oh three no. battle shots oh no no they're not they're not good 50. he ghost kill is okay they're not they're they're battle shot they're not he's not six i thought he was six the, i think the crisis suits are better than the fire blades we found out fire blades are leadership seven which was very interesting to say the least whereas usually when you had like a fire blade with like a little marksman-y thing or whatever. They tended to be good with leadership. Um, however, who knows? What's there? Seven. There's seven? Yep. Whoa, vulnerable to battle shock. Holy moly. Yeah. So battle shocked, and that gives me another pain token. Yes, I'm back up to two. <laughs> now, because this was a unit of two, they don't have to take battle shock. Um, other than that, onto the Tau turn. You got no prisoners. Is that gonna be kill things? Yep. Yep. You got a Ravager that's almost dead. You got Drazar. Do you want to use That's a CP fine. to get rid of behind the lines and draw another one? Or are you going to keep yeah, behind the lines? So. Yeah, well, once per game, might as well. Go down to one. Redraw. Take an objective away from me, which just happens to be the one that all your crisis suits are on, or the one where your ghost kill is at. Yep. Okay, so you can actually get some points. Not That's bad. Great. I like it. All right, not much to do at this point. So uh, I'm going to try to score my, uh, my two secondaries, kill some things. But for the most part, it doesn't look like I can move anywhere. Yeah, just kind of staying in combat and kind of getting that done. But oh, your paint job, just this whole game has been... Look at that, it looks so cool. Like, it's such a nice-looking game today. I hope you've all enjoyed the games from the uh, from the studio. I get some time to actually set up nice tables and get some really cool armies on those channels and some awesome guests. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching. Yeah. End of the shooting phase. You killed the Ravager finally with the broadsides. They did their job and killed a tank. 
And then you put the entire commander into the one cavalry to just make sure he died, and he did. So that's two kills so far. This ghost kill because he's bracketed and minus one to hit because he's wounded. Uh, almost killed this entire unit, but now you've got some charges. So he could charge in, do some maybe potentially tank shock, that sort of stuff. That's it. And uh, that will give you a full max on your secondaries if you can kill that Cavalry Warrior. Drazar did take two wounds from a bunch of Cyclics, and the Kronos is unscathed, and then the Erebus went into here. But the fact that Erebus are only strength three now yeah. makes them nowhere near as scary as they were in ninth edition. But it's good to have. I guess it's nice to have just to like clear up little units here and there, etc., etc. End of the turn. Oh man, Drazar just nuked two crises. You did fail every save though, and he just <laughs> went yeah. in and like killed the two crises that were left, and then made a save against the commander. So for some reason, Drazar really wants to show all of you on the internet that he can kill things still. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> so, so I think I might have to try to put him in more lists. That that he's been really fun. It you know, he's been he's literally just bounced around, just murdering everything. Uh, which is awesome. Ghost kill, tank shock, that unit, got you. So you are gonna be getting all of your secondaries, which does keep you in the secondary game quite effectively. So at the end of battle round number four, you did spend your command point for a tank shock. I still have one command point. You will get five for Storm Hostile and five for No Prisoners, bringing you up to 27 secondary points. That was a very nice secondary turn there. It's in the primary where you're really going to be lagging yeah. here. Okay, so with that, onto my turn number four. Secure No Man's Land, an overwhelming force, and an additional. Um, I, I do owe you. Do I have your shock somewhere? No, I no. was. Uh, 45. Yeah, oh, right, okay. 45 points for uh, primary, so I'm really up there right now in terms of scoring, and then secure no man's land. So I don't really need to hold any objectives, I need one more to max it, which means I can kinda now use my units more fearlessly, cause I'm gonna max that next turn pretty much anyway. And uh, let's see what we can do here. And pretty much, let's see what we can do. So Drazar versus Commander, uh, Kronos versus Commander, Reaver Jet Bikes versus Commander, <laughs> Lilith is just gonna hang out over there and look pretty. And then we've got, I don't know if they're going to be, they're going to have to shoot Commander. I don't know if he can make it in range of that. I've got these little guys going to try and take out that Ghost Keel. Yeah, let's go. Let's see what we can do. Maybe we can call it quits right here and go home and go back with all the spoils and take them back to Urien and be like, look, this is our cultural exchange. We brought tons of, tons of prisoners for you to experiment on. <laughs> I can, this is like, look at this. The... <laughs> entire Dark Eld army surrounding the one Tau Crisis commander oh, as, he, yeah. as he inputs the self-destruct code in his suit. <laughs> Ready to press the button. Boop, boop, bam! Uh, so iconic. Right? Yeah, it's, it's literally, they're all coming. They all want to try take the final kill. It's like a competition here. And then the two Scourge moving up to get within grenade range slash, yeah, there we go. Slash shooting over there. All right, so with that, let's go into the shooting phase. End of the shooting phase. Heat lances, kill him. Boom, just instantly dead because he had no shield run. I mean, no shield generator. So yeah, that was that was a, a, a cool 13 damage from the two heat lances. <laughs> and then the ghost kill did overwatch the scourge charged in and then nothing happened over there. So with that, let's go into score. Secure no man's land. I do get that. I get three points for overwhelming force. So that is going to be eight points, bringing me up to 35. Excellent, excellent. Oh, that's the wrong way around. So 35 to 45, one command point to zero command points. And with that, we are going to call the game as the ghost keel turns invisible and runs away. The ghost keel's gonna run away, and that is game. Patrick, handshake, thanks all for coming down to the studio. Thanks for having we'll be me. right back to a post-game report. And that is game. Thank you so much, Patrick, for coming down. Thank you for having me. That was really fun. So any shout outs before we uh, move on to the post game? Uh, nothing personal. I just want to say uh, hello to the rest of my team, Lords of the Grimdark. You can see us at any uh, local team tournaments around the bottom tables. We're just there for a good time. Grimdark. <laughs> I love it. That's great. You've been playing since like third edition. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Like uh, me, we're old school. I took a little break in the middle. But... That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Most people do. Yes. So let's talk about the game. What was like your favorite moment of the game? Um... Whiffing my second turn shooting phase. Yeah, that actually, <laughs> that, that was the turn when you came down. It didn't do as much damage as yeah. you would have hoped. That was big because it gave me enough, like, in the tank to, like, 
exactly. come back and just kind of put my foot on the gas and not let off, yep. which was crazy. Uh, That's how the game goes, though. Do you think that was the turning point? Uh, it's the start of it, for sure. Mm -hmm. yep. What was your favorite unit in the game? Uh, I still like this ghost kill sitting back here. He's been on my shelf for a little too long, and he's finally a good unit. So. They're one of the best units, especially in a bunch of dark lances, because you have to get real close and personal yep. on them as well. And as soon as you get close to them, the crisis suits tend to be able to counter whatever gets close exactly. and just, like, destroy. Yeah, these you tend to draw people out towards you. My favorite unit in this game was Drazar. He and his Incubi, I don't think, I think the Incubi got to attack like twice. He literally did most of the work. Yep. That's right. You heard it right, folks. Drazar did good. Yes. That's right, which was awesome. My turning point, I think, was definitely um, the, like, Drazar not killing that Venom was, like, the point where I feel like I was able, because you had committed to kill that whole flank, and then all of a sudden, you couldn't. And then I was on both flanks, you yeah. know what I mean? And that really kind of made it really hard for you to play the game at that point. As Drukhar, you play lots of units alive with one wound. You also <laughs> play Dark Eldar, too. I do. Oh, yes. Ah, the Dark Kin, indeed. We are all over the place. Let's unite and show that we can do this. We can play the game. We can. We can. Yes, we can. <laughs> well, thanks all, Patrick, for coming down. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is really fun. Yeah. It was really fun. A huge shout out to all of you for watching, liking, sharing, all that good algorithm stuff. And if you'd like to support the channel, the best way is on Patreon. The link is down below. It's thanks to the Patreons that I get to do this. We have a studio and we get to have awesome guests and battle reports and some entertainment for you to enjoy. After all, I've been Scar. This has been Patrick. Signing off until next time. See you later. Ah, the dark kid again. Bye.